Hi, I'm Sage the Bad Naturalist, unlicensed hobbyist mycologist putting the you in confusion. And I'd really like to become an arthropod. Never one to let my dreams stay dreams. I got a plan. To answer the tedious naysayer's question of why I'd like to be an arthropod, just listen to yourself. Why? Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Just look at them. Also, are you telling me that you were not tired of having skin? Carcinization is the wave of the future. Also, I really think I'd like molting. You just like, you take a couple days off work, you're all by your lonesome, you just like sit still for a really long time and then just sort of hulk and sloth off your most exterior layer and then you've exfoliated all in one go. Also, to be clear, I don't wanna like transform into a little pinchy guy and go live in the ocean. I wanna be me, me sized, have a complete exoskeleton and the ability to rip my own arm off to win arguments. You see, uh, I have this condition called endoskeleton. And so do you. Uh, it just means your superstructure is on the inside. But my inside bones suck. They're small, they're fragile, they hurt all the time. The actual condition I have is called ankylosing spondylitis as literally illustrated by, I think something I'm going to eventually tattoo onto myself. Most days, uh, I walk with one of these. It's, it's not the best, you know, as, as diseases rank, it's not my favorite. Try not to get a genetically acquired autoimmune disease. You see, there's two major forms of critters with outside bones. There are, of course, as we all recall, backpack and armor. Now, unfortunately, uh, I already have a slight hunchback, so this one's gotta be out. Now, as much as I admire the entire phylum Arthropoda, uh, there are two common through lines that are just not gonna work for me. First, which is absolutely disqualifying, um, is that <sighs> bugs communicate with stink. I mean, bugs, broadly speaking, uh, share information by excreting pheromones. Um, and scaled up to five feet tall and whatever my volume is, I figure that's probably gonna be a really major hindrance in my day-to-day -day life. And second, not really a nice way to say this, uh, arthropods, categorically, just kind of dum dums. Yeah, they're not that smart. There, there are no clever bugs, large or small, wet or dry. And that's perfectly fine. Being dumb as a rock and strong as one too is a perfectly legitimate evolutionary strategy. So given that my noodle is kind of the best thing I got going for myself, uh, I really got to figure out what the limiting factor is preventing arthropods from being smart. Let's start with the brain's house, known amongst evolutionary biologists as skull. And skull is made of skeletons, and skeletons is made of bones, and bones are made of c c collagen, actually. Did you know that? Yeah, calcium and her little mineral friends, they're the hardening component, but by volume, it's mostly collagen in there. What's arthropod skeleton made of? I rhetorically ask because I desperately hope that you are too wondering. I can't wait to tell you because two of my special interests are about to converge. Chitin! They're made of chitin! Okay, let me explain. So uh, our exterior layer, layer hard-ish, quick-growing stuff, our hair, our nails, things like that, that's all made of keratin. And arthropods, their hard-ish, quick-growing, protective outer layer is much harder and stronger than ours, and it's chitin. We have keratin, they have chitin. whoop de doo Who cares that other critters use different molecules? Would you like to know what else is made of chitin? Mushrooms. Mushrooms are made of chitin even though they are not hard and strong. They are wet, they are squishy, they are flexible, they are sedentary, and they are temporary. That's no, what? That has nothing, what? What? Absolutely nothing in the natural world is as it seems. All that was once simple in the naturalist journals from days of yore are now incomprehensibly abstract, ill-defined, uncomprehendable. And they all serve as an ever-growing weight on the conscious hours of learned men. We do not know all there is to know about the natural world. We cannot know all there is to know about the natural world because how can it be that mushrooms are made of crab? So anyway, chitin is dope. I'm a big fan of that molecule. Uh, I really hope that AI tech investment funds start diverting their money away from, you know, that whole thing uh, and start instead um, investing in like biomaterials specifically using chitin because like it is flexible, it is waterproof, it is durable, and yet it decomposes. What are we still using petroleum for? We got bug skin. 
So since I want to be approximately me size, but with a complete exoskeleton, uh, crustaceans are kind of my only option. There's really no other class of arthropod which gets anywhere near this big. But unfortunately, crustaceans are obligate soggy boys, and wet is for rocks, not sages. Confused? Check the back catalog. I got a lot of ground to cover here. So whatever crustacean I become is going to need a lot of modification to suit my needs. Here's my big plan. Step one, I need to compile a list of the largest arthropods. Step two, CRISPR. Yeah, man, I'm serious about this plan. Step three is a secret. Step four, scuttle. Japanese spider crabs and Atlantic lobsters are the largest arthropods by length and weight respectively, but unfortunately, still not anywhere near human size. I mean, they can get pretty dang big, but still not people sized. And again, I'm meant for life on land, so unfortunately they cannot be the base layer for my creation. Coconut crab's the largest terrestrial arthropod, and I know part of their reproduction cycle happens in water, don't get pedantic with me, but if they stay in that water for too long, they will drown. And that doesn't sound very amphibious to me. So unfortunately, none of these are, are quite right, but since they do get reasonably large, um, they do just sort of stand as a, as a proof of concept of the superstructure that the exoskeleton can support a large volume and weight, however, inadequate it might be. So if I were to just somehow like demon possess a coconut crab with my consciousness, I'd really only be about a third of the way to my end goal. Because remember, my three part checklist is that I need to be me, me sized, with a complete exoskeleton and have human brain capacity. And no offense to coconut crabs, but oh wait, sorry, uh, uh, I need to add a fourth one. Fourth is that um, I'd like to have hair. I really like my hair. It's okay if it's a little different than mine, but I really like my hair. It's important to me. So even though arthropods, whenever they have hair-like structures, they're actually still made of chitin, I need to be able to produce keratin just up here. And no offense to coconut crabs, but they, uh, they have fewer neurons. And on the topic of neuron count, a quick word about my carcinization quip from the beginning. Yeah, you know, several years ago when we began this story. If this video is more than a few days old at the time that you're watching it, pretend I'm wearing a hat. I will eat my hat if there isn't at least one comment saying, oh, well, actually, that's not how carcinization works, before finishing the video. Commenting about something within the video before they finish watching the video about something that is later explained within the video is a phenomenon my girlfriend likes to call premature reaculation. So to correct the quip, carcinization is not like the, the end all be all of evolution. It's not like the final end point, the absolute pinnacle of, of evolutionary forms. Uh, it's not like, you know, you and I will eventually, given them time, all of these body forms will just turn into crab. No, it's a, it's a phenomenon that describes when already crab-like critters gradually coalesce around increasingly crabby characteristics. Which is still impressive. You can still share that fun fact. That's pretty cool. Lest you think I'm doing all the work of this video for a laugh, I am and have been for some time a member of the Church of the Leviathan Lobster God. Hail the Lord, so mult it be. A real group of oddballs who all noted the fact that, uh, lobsters? have no growth limiting hormone and all that stops them from living approximately forever is the fact that they eventually get so big it's so difficult and takes so long for them to slough off their latest huge layer of exoskeleton that they die in the process either of starvation or they get like attacked when they're like halfway out so it stands to reason that if a bunch of us shared custody of a lobster and once it got really old we like helped her take off her skin suit each time, she could probably live forever. There are lobsters recorded well over a hundred years old. It's generally considered that there aren't any left out in the ocean uh, because we found all of them and ate them. Shout out to Julia Child for finding what may very well have been one of the last oceanic humongo bugs. Also beach cleanups, that's, that's actually most of it. Also, it's just like one guy's art project. Being a member just means I'm on his email list. Hail the Lord. But of course, the lobster is just the proof of concept. I, you know, I wouldn't mind looking like a waterlogged scorpion, but you know, there's some tweaks I'd like to make. Specifically, there are some aspects of like uh, centipedes, isopods that I'd really like to incorporate. Um, I especially like their ability to, um, uh, upon panicking, just, that makes a lot of sense to me. That's something I'd like to do a lot of the time anyway. It'd be nice to just have a body plan that accommodates that more. And sure, they live in the dirt, but I like the dirt. However, they are all conspicuously and mercifully pretty small compared to a human. But what if we look deeper in the dirt? What if we look so deep in the dirt, we travel through time? The real crux of this project is Arthroplora, the largest known ever to exist arthropod. It is a gigantic millipede. 
here it is, to scale, next to me. Ah! <laughs> Look at its eyes. It's hideous, and I love it. Also, some of the artist renditions in this are going a little too hard on the horror factor. We have no reason to believe that they would, like, rear up like this intimidatingly and, like, slobber probably acid on its enemies. Like, that's not something modern-day millipedes do. We have no reason to believe that ancient ones would have as well. Like, they are decomposers. Calm down. They eat nature trash. Centipedes, however, do. They are hideous, horrible, deeply unsettling hellspawn whom I will not be discussing further in this video. But the Mini Cooper-sized arthropod lived in an era when the atmosphere had substantially more oxygen than it does today. And as far as I can tell, all the research points to this as the reason why there are no longer gigantic land-dwelling bugs like this. It's the external limiting factor that prevents any newly evolved modern arthropods from developing that size. But let's discuss bugs more broadly. A term I know is imprecise, but please remember, I am a internet science talk talk clown. I am not a PhD candidate in the entomology department. Please cut me some slack. Why does less oxygen mean that there can't be big bugs? Uh, it turns out the answer is that uh, they all breathe through their exoskeleton. Like they don't, they don't have lungs. Did you know that? Bugs don't have lungs. Categorically, they don't have a vascular system like we are imagining. So their entire oxygen delivery system is through, you know, the atmosphere under all their layers, their exoskeletal layers, it just, it's permeable. Uh, and then it just permeates directly into their organs. So obviously, uh, if an organ is, you know, too far deep uh, from any, any external direction, uh, the oxygen is not gonna get there. The, organ will be starved of it. And unfortunately, it does solve the major problem from before, which is that complex human brains are very oxygen hungry. So then what's the plan, Stan? If I can't just demon possess an existing animal, if any resurrected prehistoric animal, if I could then demon possess, would not necessarily meet all my necessary characteristics, what am I gonna do? Step one is to create the organism which I wish to be. Based on all my research so far, I believe I'd be well served by the following characteristics. The big dumb pinchers of a crab. The many arms of a millipede. The size of Arthropleura. The vascular system of a large mammal. And all necessary bridge genetic modifications to make all that happen. Okay. How? Enter CRISPR. CRISPR is a precision gene editing tool and I do not understand how it works. And it would seem literally every Competent and informed engineer, scientist, researcher cannot find a simple way to explain it. And unfortunately, every single journalist who reports on CRISPR when they do the little, and what is this technology anyway, how does it work section, they all explain it the same inadequate way. I have listened to interviews, watched explainers, read papers, read articles, looked at diagrams. I have done all the research one can do. I have listened to archival material from when it was new. I even went and watched the, the, the TED talk that talked about it. And let me tell you, none of it made clear how this works. I don't need like super fine detail. I just need enough to comprehend it. And that seems to not be available on the internet. They all use one analogy, all of them. No one has ever thought of a better analogy for this. And it goes like this. <clears throat> CRISPR is like a word processor, but for genetics. You can cut, paste, and edit individual genes like words in a sentence in Microsoft Word. Okay, cool. How? But they all just stop there. How could, how do you write an email with DNA? How is this working? And the answer is always, it's the Cas9 protein. Okay. I'm familiar with what proteins are. I don't know about that one in particular, but like, you know, they're like organic squiggles. But like, how do you use a protein to download a wanted poster for a bad gene? How does a squiggle hold scissors? Unfortunately, it seems impossible to explain this to a layperson. So I did my very best. I read a couple of like paper papers, like the ones for like real scientists who knew what they're talking about. And um, it made me question whether or not I'm literate 
I, I really could not wrap my head around this. I did not take any advanced biology in college. I went to college for most of the years for engineering and I took biology for engineers in which I kid you not, one of our labs involved playing with plastic beads. They did not think we had any chance of understanding biology and they were right. So here is my probably incorrect, undoubtedly inadequate layperson's explanation of how CRISPR works. It would have to just like bounce around in there, right? Until it just like happened to line up with the right one and stick to it. Cause it doesn't have like a propulsion and guidance system. It's not like intelligently, like you digest it and then it like swims right to the exact right strand of DNA. Okay, so I know the, the, the DNA s sequence, the strand of the bad gene that I wanna get rid of. And it's chemically, you know, got this pattern. Um, so then I, in the lab, synthesize that string or like the pair bond, the inverse of that string. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how nucleotide Lego works. Okay, new plan. Uh, I make friends with someone who knows how CRISPR works. And undoubtedly, I'm going to find out exactly how CRISPR works 45 seconds after this video is uploaded because someone will correct me. And this particular time, I'm very grateful for that because then I'll finally learn. So yeah, uh, my new friend I will make in the comment section who understands how CRISPR works. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them my list and then they'll do all the hard work. I believe through the power of chitin, I could do the following. If I were to say, get a topical fungal infection, ringworm, let's say, uh, and I were to not treat it, but then trek to the Cascadian mountain range uh, and find one of the countless fruiting bodies that all belong to Armorillia ostiae, um, I could then um, touch my active fungal infection um, to, to one of the fruiting bodies um, <clears throat> and then uh, seep my consciousness out of my body and then into that fungal network, um, which spans an entire mountaintop and then um, it could travel, it could, it could uh, spread itself, spread, spread thin um, through that fungal network over the whole mountain. And then also every other interconnected fungal network and like daisy chain my way all the way probably across multiple continents. I could do all of North and South America uh, if they're totally connected. I know there's a little, there's some water in there. It, there's aquatic fungi, I don't know. Um, and then uh, once, once I'm there, once my, if that's enough storage space, because apparently with DNA, you can write emails. Once I have stored all of that uh, across across all, all, all that fungal space, um, I would then plant my, my living CRISPR creation uh, with no consciousness, with no soul. Um, I'd stick, I don't know, it's like it's little legs, just touch some of its chitin onto the chitinous mycelial network. And then um, it could then suck up like like moisture, like nutrients, it could then absorb my consciousness, uh, my sense of self, my memories, my personality, my way of being, um, and then who I am would be uploaded into the brain of my, of my thing. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Sounds pretty good. So I'm feeling a pretty good and confident in my plan. Um, I'm just gonna go put together a thematically appropriate outfit. Uh, and while I do that, I will load my original sketch of this idea at dial up speed. It's giving crustacean she. I just got out the chair, hair down to my hamstrings. It's giving scapiana, cause my cousin did her damn thing. Got that shit lit. Bust down, down, down. People looking at me. Like, oh, 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 oh. They gonna have a heart attack. Somebody call the medic. So give it to the girls, even when the wig's synthetic. With Jesus on the line, and he said he gonna bless it. Na 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 boo boo, I still got my edges. That's my Give me your money, nerd.